Hello, my name is Dr. Chris Coker, and this is Christian Webb, MD. The topic at hand is type 2 diabetes mellitus, and we're going to talk about the treatments. This is the second section talking about the treatments. This one focuses a bit more on the medications actually to lower blood sugar. In most cases with type 2 diabetes mellitus, it's going to become necessary for there to be some type of medication. I don't like that as some people can be treated simply with diet and exercise. People ask me all the time, what should I take? And the answer is it depends. We usually start with a medication called metformin. It works very well and tends to have less side effects. However, there can be some nausea, vomiting, and even some diarrhea, but most people tolerate it well, and in the short term, it can work reasonably well to lower blood sugars. If that doesn't work or begins to fade, we often have to add a second agent. That second agent, for instance, might be an older drug called the sulfonylureas. This includes glipizide and glucotrol. They do work, but they tend to wear off after about a year, and they can lower blood sugars too much, leaving the blood sugars low where a patient is shaking and sweating and perhaps even passing out. Sometimes we use a medication, Actos. This medication does work over the long haul and can be very effective even though it's very slow to begin. It usually takes one to three months to work. It is associated with bladder cancer, however, and that scare has caused a lot of patients to rethink their taking Actos. I do understand that, although the bladder cancer is fairly uncommon. There's a couple new groups of medications out there as, as well. One are called the DPP-4 inhibitors. This includes Trojenta, Onglyza, and Genuvia. They're usually well tolerated, but respiratory infections are a possibility with these. They're also not the strongest medication in the world. and They do seem to wear off after about a year or two. Another new group are called the GLP-1 agonist. These are injectables, but they use a very small needle. As a matter of fact, one of them you only have to inject once a week, and that's Bieta or Bideron and Victoza. Nausea and vomiting is a possibility. As a matter of fact, it can be such a possibility that it's associated with weight loss. But again, that weight loss may come at a price. Ask your physician what's right for you. These medications can be combined and are often used to avoid insulin, but you have to find the regimen that's right for you. Remember that this video is for educational use only, and if you have questions about treatment, please consult your physician about this complicated topic. Thank you for watching Christian WebMD.